Civil War. Or I should be more specific, A24 is Civil War. Not to be confused with Disney's Marvel's uh, Avengers Captain America Civil War. I think I'm ripping off of uh, uh, Red Letter Media the way they describe that movie. But uh, this is a movie that is set during an American Civil War that has absolutely no interest in delving into what the actual politics would revolve around an American Civil War. And probably the best example I can show of how much it's trying to steer away from like actual real world political realities of America and why we might end up having a schism. They have one of the factions is called the Western Forces of Texas and California. And I can't imagine any universe in which Texas allies with California against Washington, D.C. That's just not that, that, that's, that doesn't happen. But I figured out why they did it, though. It's because California is the big liberal state, right? And Texas is the big conservative state. And so if California and Texas are both allied and are attacking Washington, D.C., well, then the conservatives in the audience can go, aha, see, my side's on the right side because Texas is fighting the, the, the president. And uh, the liberals can go, oh, California is there. Of course, we're on the right side, naturally. And the president is like the kind of the villain. He's almost never seen in the movie, but pretty much everyone talks about him like he's the whole reason that the Civil War is happening. He's in his third term. He's played by Nick Offerman. And like you could kind of get like Trumpian vibes from him, but it's nothing like over the top in that regard. Like the, the, the most is that he has stayed beyond his constitutional two terms and the only presidential candidate or former president that I can think of in living memory, like who's alive today, who has openly stated to being interested in more than two terms would be Trump. That aside, the movie really isn't about any of that. The movie is about war reporters. The, the, the main characters are all war journalists who are on a road trip to D.C. because they want to get an exclusive interview with the president, presumably before the president loses the war. And the if the movie has a message at all, it's that war reporting is dangerous and these people are either brave or like have a death wish. Um, then also that war is just generally chaotic and bad. But also the characters just generally don't seem to be interested in being reporters. There are multiple sequences as they're on a trip, you know, to DC where they go through little bits here and there of the Civil War and nobody's ever really asking questions. There's a couple times early on where they're taking photographs of things that they're seeing. But like there's a there's a moment where they drive through a town that seems like it's completely unaffected by the Civil War. People are just out walking their dogs and, you know, uh, living in small town America. And like, you know, one of the main characters goes up to a cashier and is like, you guys know, there's like a pretty big Civil War going on across America, right? She's like, yeah, we just try to keep out of it. Keep our head down. Seems like it's for the best. And I was just like, that was the extent of his question. If I were a war reporter, and I was in a town that was this close to the front lines that seems completely unaffected, I would think that would be an interesting story to at least spend a day like interviewing people in the area for, right? But he doesn't care about any of that. Like that pit stop is mostly just so that people can, you know, like the main characters can have bonding moments with each other rather than doing any actual war reporting. The action for the most part is never really portrayed as like, hell yeah, let's watch this fight go on. It is portrayed as very hectic, deadly, it, war is not a fun thing, but there is like uh, probably toward the end when we're seeing the, the, the battle in Washington, D.C., there's probably a bit more of the, you know, th that's where the, the bulk of the budget of the film went was to the third act uh, battle sequence. And there's fun things that happen in it, but even so, it still has that very like war torn vibe to it where just war is chaos and death and it's not really fun 
the sound mix does a lot to that. There are moments where gunfire comes in just really, really loudly. Like, I don't know how it would sound on like a, a TV, but I saw it in a Dolby theater and you just had like punctuated gunshots that were mixed way louder than gunshots normally are in movies just, you know, to sell that. Oh, no, this is actually really loud. And that actually made me notice that at no point in the movie are any of the war reporters wearing ear protection. And there was a big deal made early on about this one character who she's like in her early 20s and is just starting off wanting to be a war reporter. And um, she's advised to wear a helmet and a Kevlar vest uh, in the future because she was just like wearing a T-shirt. And um, she wears a Kevlar vest later, but like none of the characters are wearing helmets during the final sequence, which is set during like an active major battle in the nation's capital. So I don't know, did they just forget that they had the whole thing where it's like, you should be wearing a helmet or did they just not want to put their actors in helmets because that might hide part of their performance? I, you know, whatever. I can't necessarily fully recommend this movie because I just, I don't think that the filmmakers were interested enough in taking this premise to tell like a, a daring story with it. I think it was hampered by its attempts to, you know, not take political sides and just try and be like war is bad because like anybody can tell a movie that says war is bad. If you're setting it in America, what's the purpose for that? Why is America in a civil war? I think ultimately this movie could have been set in any war and setting it in America is mostly just to have the audience more personally invested in the victims of the war because they see them and it's just like, oh, well, you know, uh, like a lot of Americans, if they see war footage and it's just somewhere in the Middle East, like um, the, the unfortunate reality is a lot of them are just not going to care because it's like, oh, yeah, that's a war, but there's always a war there. Like, that's just what happens when it's here. Maybe there's a little bit more to the impact of, oh, God, like, that just looks like my town. And here there's like a, a dump truck full of bodies being poured into, you know, uh, a hole. So maybe there's that to it. But ultimately, uh, yeah, I, I I can't recommend seeing this movie, which is a shame. There was a lot of promise to it. And I remember seeing the trailers and like the trailer is like, this could be good, but it could be really tone deaf. And I think ultimately it was not tone deaf. It just wasn't courageous enough you know hey thanks for watching your view means a lot don't forget to toss me a like and subscribe and ring the bell and drop a comment below telling me what you thought of the video i stream mondays and fridays at 5 p.m pacific so catch me live and join in on the convo you can find all my socials in the description below and thank you to all my patrons with a very special shout out to my whale shark tier patrons ryan d and james knight and my anemone friend tier patron piftle cakes your support means the world catch you next time